Welcome back. In this video I'm going to talk in some more detail about why we would want to wait survey data and how to approach that in R. I'm not going to exhaustively cover how to approach that in R because it's beyond the curriculum of this course, but I want to give you a starting point to then explore it yourself if you want and need to. So firstly, I'll recap why waiting is done and why it matters, and then show two different ways of how to do it in R. It matters because survey samples are rarely ever random. The idea of a random sample is that each member of the population has an equal chance to make it into the data. Usually they don't, and often they don't because the, the survey designers, the researchers, oversample on purpose. They might say there is some small group, maybe the grey people um, in this graphic, some small group that's really important. If we just sample randomly, we won't get enough of them to make good estimates about the subgroup. So let's sample more of them, so we can make a good estimate for grey people. And then let's give them a lower weight so we can still make correct estimates for the overall population. Conversely, our sample might cease to be random during the data collection process if some participants are systematically more or less likely to participate than others. In that case, uh, our, white, our white characters in this population might just really not want to participate in the survey so that we end up with too few of them and then again we need to consider weighting the data to correct for that. Those two types of situations use somewhat different weights. The first situation uses design weights. The idea here is that in the survey design we have already decided that some cases afterwards will be weighted more or less strongly for analysis uh, of the whole sample. Or we might have post uh, stratification weights. The idea there is that we look at our sample, we compare the sample to the population, and we give higher weight to groups in the sample that are underrepresented, lower weight to groups in the sample that are overrepresented. This is done a lot in election polling. Some uh, social surveys give you post-certification weights, and the recommendation would be to usually use them. But if you want to calculate them yourself, or if you want to critically think about the ones that are provided in the datasets, it's worth noting that it's quite hard to justify which variables to try to correct for through certification, and which variables to ignore. So, usually we would include age and gender, but then it becomes already quite difficult to decide if we want to include ethnicity, if we want to include employment status, income, um, living situation, urban versus rural. So there are very quickly many, many variables that we could use to calculate post stratification weights. If we use too many variables, we can just introduce a lot of noise into our data. But the notion of post stratification weights is that we want to make our sample look more like the population by giving stronger weight to underrepresented groups, lower weight to overrepresented groups. In either case, what we get is one weight for each case, for each participant, and the sum of all the weights should be equal to our sample size. Because after weighting, the sum of all the weights is what will be reported and used as the new sample size, so ideally they should be the same. Let's look at one specific example of weighted survey data that I have worked with and published. That's ALBUS, the general social survey um, in Germany. And what they do is that they recognize that Germany is still divided on some outcomes between the former East and West, between the formerly socialist and uh, the capitalist part. But the East only makes up 
17% of the German population. So if you just sample randomly across all of Germany, you won't get that many East Germans. So it would be difficult to make precise estimates about um, any constructs for East Germany alone. So what Alvis does is they oversample respondents from the East. They take about twice as many respondents from the East as you would find in a, in a random sample. But then afterwards, they say, for analysis of the entire German population, only give half as much weight to people in the East as you do to people in the West, roughly. So they provide these very specific uh, weights here, 0.53 for the East, 1.23 for the West. When you add all of them up, they add up to the original sample size. But now mean that responses from the, from the East, where we had kind of too many participants from, um, are counted less strongly in the analysis. How do we use such weights in R? Sometimes it's very straightforward when you use functions that accept the weights as an additional argument. So um, the LM function that we use to run a linear regression accepts that as an argument. So here we have the standard code to run a regression of income as predicted by education. We provided the data, we provided with the weights, and we get a coefficient that indicates that for each level of education completed, um, the estimated monthly income increases by 282 euros. If we take out the weights, we get a different coefficient, in this case a lower coefficient, which maybe we can explain by people in the East, uh, some of them still having been educated in a system that was focused on a different society and a different economy, so maybe the association there is actually weaker for a reason. But in any case, this shows that if we don't use the weights, the result will be biased towards the value in the German East. Unfortunately, it's not always so easy. For the basic descriptive statistic functions, there is no weight argument to use. So they are either you need to calculate, you need to take the weights into account yourself in the calculations, which is sometimes possible but gets complex quite quickly, or you need to use um, dedicated additional packages. There are two really good ones, the survey and surveyor package that work in conjunction, so you need both of them. They will not form part of the exam. And you certainly don't need to understand them in full because they allow for the analysis of very complex survey designs. You might want to understand how to use them just to attach simple weights to your survey data and we'll look at that briefly together in class. Just to give you a sense of the workflow of these packages. The first idea is that we create survey objects and those survey objects contain the survey data and in addition information about the survey design. So in this quite straightforward case they contain the data and the weights for each case in the data. Once we have that object we can work with it like we work with data frames. We can filter it, we can mutate um, to add new variables, we can group it for the calculation of summary statistics by groups. And then there are now functions like survey mean, survey median and so on that calculate the weighted descriptive statistics. Under the link here you can find an example for how these packages are used to analyze European social survey data. Um, and if you google you can find examples for how to use these packages to analyze most other publicly available um, social survey data sets. So before you use them for any research, you will need to learn um, how to use these packages. Just a brief recap, we need uh, 
to, to wait, social survey data in most cases, because the data will not, uh, the, the, the sample will not be random, the data won't directly represent the population. Sometimes on purpose, because we want to make sure to have enough responses from small groups, sometimes because of differential response. In either case, weights allow us to, to correct for that. Um, and some R functions allow you to specify the weights directly. And in some other cases, we need to use specialized survey packages. Please do bring any conceptual questions in particular to class. It's important that you conceptually understand what design weights and post-certification weights are about. And feel free to explore these packages further. See you in class.